Hello, I'm Sean Bishop, Director of Bishop Instruments and Bows, and this is my monthly segment, What's New This Month? We're talking about June, and this is just a few small pieces that I've picked up. I've got other things floating around and with my restorers and bows getting fixed up. I seem to have bought about, I think, 15 bows this month, so it's been a bit, bit of a crazy month. Right, let's quickly get on to it. Uh, we've got two violins here and a viola. I'll start with uh, the violins first. I've got a beautiful Enrico Marchetti. He's one of my favorite makers, he's from Turin. This violin was uh, when he was working just outside of Turin, actually. Um, I won't even attempt to pronounce the Italian name. So let's just, for all intents and purposes, Marchetti is a Turin maker, and this is a Turin violin. So you think of um, Giuseppe Rocca, the next cab off the mark, Enrico Marchetti, followed by uh, Fanuola. Okay, uh, this is a really nice example sort of Del Jesu pattern, uh, made in 1898. And uh, I totally love this violin. I think it sounds absolutely fantastic. I'll play a few notes. Um, might as well quickly talk about this bow. So, bow by J.A. Vigneron, a Parry. Vigneron, one of the great uh, last makers of the, the late 19th century. This bow was probably made about 1880. Um, I'm a big fan of Vigneron. Uh, people, it's cheaper than a Sartre. Uh, maybe slightly more expensive than Fatigue, um, but I would rather have a Vigneron than a Sartre. I think you get more colours with these bows from the 19th century. So Vigneron uh, is a maker I constantly look for, and this one is in fantastic condition with original lapping. So that's a nice thing to have. Right, let's have a quick play of the Marchetti. <laughs> said very short play um, really nice violin I've just got that back today actually from uh, my setup guy who will name uh, uh, remain anonymous um, <laughs> next violin uh, one of the schools that I love Naples this is Giuseppe Desiato uh, made in because it's got his label which is very rare 1896 just before he died I believe in 1905 um, for all intents and purposes, it looks a little bit like a Dalla Corta or even a Postiglione uh, gone wrong. Um, so his work is a little bit, uh, I don't say rough, it's just, it's like I said, with, with Naples, you're getting a margarita pizza here. There's no frills, it is what it is, nicely made work, and they always sound good. And they're all based on the Galliano model. This one is no difference. This is featured in two books. It's in Dimitri Gindon's new book on Italian makers. And it's gonna be featured in Eric Blow's uh, fifth volume on the Naples makers. Let's have a quick play of that. I will do up my bow because I haven't done it up. Right. <laughs> So it's, it's a really good violin. I like that one. Um, viola. Right, we have Carlo Caletti, um, a maker who worked around Bologna, I think, that sort of area. Although, in a way, he's not regarded as much of a Bologna maker. He's more sort of Rome, in between Bologna and Rome. Um, and his work is, is, is quite rare, particularly violas. And this is a very rare viola, not labelled. Comes with certificates from Bruce Carlson of Cremona. Uh, perfect size, 41 centimetres, uh, and I saw this viola 15 years ago, it's come back to me again, and um, I think it's just absolutely beautiful viola, I'll have a quick play. Right, quick talk, two viola bows here I'm showing from this month, uh, JJ Milon, Jean-Jacques Milon of Paris, um, one of the last of the great uh, French bow makers, I'm running out of time because I'm trying to keep this to five minutes, um, and I got to meet him in 1992 when I was in Paris, I walked into Rue de Rome, went to a violin shop, and I said, who's the best bow maker in Paris? They said, Jean-Jacques Milan. And I said, oh, where is he? And they said, round the corner. So I went around the corner, down the stairs, into his little basement, one little window, and there he was making. He had a great chat for a couple of hours, and he told me all about his bow making history and all that sort of stuff. It was a great time. And uh, I've got a nice bow here of his, made circa 1970, gold mounted. They always were gold mounted from 1970 onwards. He told me, and subsequently I found out because he had a gambling problem, it was easier to sell gold bows. Right, I'll have a quick play of the Carletti Viola. <laughs> nice one. 
Um, final quick bow, Claude Thomasin, uh, French bow maker. This bow was made about 1920. He fits somewhere. I sort of have him as being a, a poor man sartre, not quite as good as fatigue, but actually very rare uh, in a viola bow. I've got two, and this is one that just came in octagonal, fantastic mint condition, plays really well. I've enjoyed playing on it, and I hope you will too. Anyway, see you next month. Bye-bye.